Okay, thanks guys for coming back. Uh, so, so I, let me remind you the theorem that we were uh, beginning to prove. So this is our theorem, um, Simon and Smith. So the following, if I have a, uh, some, a three sphere with some arbitrary metric that this admits uh, an embedded uh, minimal uh, uh, two sphere, Okay, and the, the idea was we were considering sweep outs of the sphere. So we had some crazy metric on a sphere, who knows what it does, and we were looking at these sort of these families of sweep outs. This, but so we denote by pi the, the collection of, of sweep outs. This is a collection of sweep outs. So these are sweep outs that consist of spheres, except for at, the, at one point where they uh, at two points where they degenerate to a point. Okay, and then we define this number, which was the, the width. Okay, this is the enthema over all uh, of our families, all of our families of uh, all of our sweep outs. Uh, for each one, we take the supremum as t goes between uh, minus one and one, uh, and then we take the area. Uh, and uh, so, so we want to optimize these one parameter families and hope to get a minimal surface. So the first uh, thing we need to check, any hope to get a critical point, right, is that this number w is actually bigger than zero, right? Because if it's not bigger than zero, then we, we, there's no hope to get a, a minimal surface. Um, so, mm, so, so what's the, what's the idea? Well, um, Right, so so, think, so so we have this, think of what this one parameter family is doing. It starts at a point and it ends at a point. So let's just pick some uh, family of uh, sweep out, okay? And so that's a two sphere, as long as t is not equal to minus one or one. And so uh, uh, sigma t uh, bounds uh, a three ball. Uh, uh, so let's denote it by omega t. So, so the boundary of omega t is just equal to sigma t. Okay, so, so if this is uh, sigma t that I'm interested in, right, the three ball is everything on this side. Okay, so we have a one parameter family uh, of regions in the, in, the, in, in, the, in the three manifold, right? So let's just consider this function f of t, which is the volume of uh, omega t. Okay, so let's just graph this function. Uh, so, so when t uh, is negative one, so what is the value of this uh, function going to be? Uh, sorry? Yeah, we're starting at this point. So we, we start out at zero. So we're starting at zero. And if t is equal to one, we're going to get all the way up to the, uh, the volume of the manifold. Okay, right? Because once, my, once I'm sweeping everything out, the whole manifold is included. But the function is not necessarily monotone. It could, it could be going up, it could be going down, it could be going backwards, et cetera. But it has to, it has to, it has to go like that. Okay, that's the definition of a sweep out. So what's the point? Uh, well, the point is, so, so there exists a, a T naught uh, in uh, the interval from minus one to one, such that uh, the volume of this guy uh, is equal to one half the volume of the entire manifold. Intermediate value theorem it has to be because it's because it's a smooth family that's a continuous function, and uh, and so uh, so we have the isoparametric interval. Okay, uh, so let me just state it in general for a general three manifold. So if I have some any three manifold M three with any metric, there exists a positive number okay, such that. Um, if uh, if uh, 
if sigma t is a closed surface, well, let's just say sigma. Sigma is a closed surface uh, bounding uh, a region, bounding, let's call it uh, omega. Okay, then, uh, then the volume of omega, and then we have to get the powers right, so the one third is less than or equal to c, and here I have the area of sigma, sigma uh, to one half. So there's going to be a course in isotermetric inequalities next week. I don't know if he's going to prove this, but, but, but there exists such a constant. Now, how does that apply to us? Well, uh, we just apply this uh, to us, uh, so or we apply uh, to the case, uh, uh, to the surface, uh, just sigma t0, the one that fills out half of the manifold. OK, and if we do that, what do we get? We get that the area of the sky to the power of half uh, is greater or equal to 1 over c times, uh, this is now 1 half the volume of m uh, to the 1 third power. So if we square, so, so we have a lower bound. So, so for any sweep out, there has to, sorry, this should be a T naught. There has to exist a slice, a, a surface in that family, which has an area lower bounded. But, but uh, so let's just rewrite it. So we get area. Uh, so T is bigger or equal to uh, square this. Uh, Two thirds. And this is independent of the sweep out. This is independent of uh, which of, of which family I started with in the in this in this class pi. Okay, so therefore the, the supremum over all t, uh, right? So the supremum uh, over all t uh, is also going to be bigger than that. And then when we take inf, it's also going to be bigger than this positive number. Questions about that? It's expressing the non-triviality of this family. Sorry, yeah. Uh, why should we take a These bounds are not going to be sharp. So yeah, we could do one third of the volume or any, any fraction that would, would give the same lower. The point is we just want to we just want to know that it's positive. Okay, then there's a hope that there's a minimal surface at that level. Other questions? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so if the uh, theta and the manifold contact, uh, I mean, it's totally a total question. Because if the volume is one, then you don't have to do not have, uh, I mean, if the volume of the ball is the whole volume, then yes. you cannot have the volume because the area of the surface is zero. I'm not understanding your question. Yeah. So um, if, the, um, if the volume yeah. uh, is one half, yeah. then you you must have a surface with only the area bounding it, but if you have if you're the volume that you're considering, it's the whole volume of the right, volume. right. There's no, are you, were you asking a question or? No, yeah, it, it, was, a, it was about the um, inequality. Is it, is it true with when you have? So for any, any T in between, uh, 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 I mean, for, di for different fractions, you will get a different inequality. Yeah. Say it again. Sorry. I, I, okay. Yeah. So okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh. Right. Uh. Yeah. So. So. Okay. Uh, are there other questions? Question, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. I was getting confused. Yeah, sorry. The volume of omega has to be less than half uh, the volume of that. So, yeah, you, you have to pick the smaller, uh, the smaller of the two regions. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, if you pick the, yeah, so if you go all the way to the end, uh, the area is getting very small. So, so you need to pick the, the right. 
This was supposed to be simple, and I managed to confuse myself. Um, okay. Um, so, so what are the challenges making this process work? Um, well, uh, so, so okay. So, so once we know it's it's, it's a positive number, we, uh, we we can try to produce a minimal surface, right? So, so, so a minimizing sequence. Um, uh, so it's a it's a it's a sequence of sweep outs. in our family. And here the indexing gets kind of annoying. We have uh, we have a sweep out and then we have an index, which is where we are in the family, uh, contained in, in, in the family of sweep outs, such that the supremum of the uh, area over T is, is, is approaching the, uh, the, the, the width. So it's, it's say what less than W plus um, uh, so epsilon i, where epsilon i are approaching zero. Okay, so in some sequence where uh, your your uh, your maximal value is approaching what we expect to be the critical value. Okay, and then from a, uh, a minimizing sequence, we obtain a min max. Uh, we take a min max sequence. So a min max sequence. So we have our, our family, which is uh, which is sigma i, and then we're going to pick a time uh, from each family. So it's a, it's a sequence uh, uh, obtained from the from the minimizing sequence. Uh, such that the area uh, of this guy is converging to uh, to the next thing. Okay, and, and the, the hope is that a min-max, some, some min, so the hope is some min-max sequence sequence uh, converges uh, to, a, to a minimal surface in some sense. Okay, so what are the, the sort of challenges? Okay, so for those who are used to PDE, uh, well, the first challenge is that this sequence, sigma i t i, uh, satisfies uh, no uh, PDE. Right? So the min max sequence is just a sequence of spheres obtained from this procedure, which are converging to this number w. So this is a, this is bad, right? I mean, it's just a sequence of surfaces. So we so to understand limits of these guys, we're going to have to understand how you just deal with limits of surfaces in general. Uh, 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 another issue is that. Um, well, you could you could easily construct min-max sequences which uh, don't converge to to a minimal surface, right? So 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 here's sort of the, so I guess the question is which min-max sequence do we pick? A priori, there could be several. So just to give an example, so let's just consider sweepouts of the round sphere S three, and we're starting out at a point, right? And we are. Imagine an optimal something that's like an optimal sweep out of the sphere on this side, and then as we're going down here, imagine that the family starts gets extremely wiggly, right? So the area here, say the you know the maybe I'll just use bar for area. The area of this surface right here is is four pi, right? but I have a very wiggly surface here, uh, sigma t not, uh, which is also very close to four pi, right? So you see that's bad. Because we're just trying to take some min-max sequence and produce a minimal surface, but uh, but maybe the min-max sequence we take is a very wiggly is a very wiggly guy over here, and we don't actually obtain uh, this guy. Okay, so that's sort of intrinsic in just the way we're, how this how this process works. Uh, so so what are the steps we're going to use? So the first step. We're 
get rid of these kind of bad, bad guys, which are very far from being anywhere near a minimal surface. And this is called pull tight. So we're going to pull uh, tight the index sequence. Okay, so that um, so that all min max sequences, whichever of those two yellow ones I picked, uh, sequences uh, converge uh, to uh, what's called uh, to a stationary variable. Okay, so this is what we will talk about today a bit. This is, uh, well, just a spoiler alert, this is some sort of weak minimal surface. It's a weak version of the minimal surface. Okay, so that's the first step. Um, the second step is, well, we want to actually get a smooth, a smooth object. So the second step is, what we're going to do is show uh, that uh, in, in one minimum sequence, What's called uh, is uh, it's what's called uh, well, it's say one over j almost minimized. So we'll define it uh, in due course. But what but, but what it means is um, it means that it's uh, approximated by by stable surfaces. That's why I, I went on the kind of Question last time about sequences of, of stable uh, of stable surfaces because our sequence we should you, you should think of your min max sequence as like a, a, a sequence of index one minimal surfaces. Like last time we saw that a sequence of index one minimal surfaces approximated by stable surfaces almost everywhere. It turns out that we get the same thing here. That's what makes the regularity theorem work. Okay, so that's. Um, Second step. <clears throat> okay, and then the third step is we want to show that anything that has this property. So the third step is uh, <clears throat> so the third step is uh, uh, so oh, um, we show that. That almost that, that uh, almost minimizing sequences uh, have regular limits. Okay, and then the fourth thing is uh, uh, so, so they have regular limits, but they occur maybe with multiplicity, which we'll talk about later today. Okay, and the fourth issue is to make sure that the surface, the smooth surfaces that we get actually are spheres, okay, that the genus is zero. So, uh, so we have to ensure uh, that the genus of limit uh, is actually equal to zero. Okay, so that's the plan. Any questions? So, I mentioned this idea of a stationary variable and uh, so we need to deal with them, unfortunately. So some of you have seen them, some of you have not. Um, uh, right, so station around. And a good resource for this uh, is a book of Leon Simon uh, called the Ge Geometric Measure Theory. Uh, it's reprinted, so you can now just go online and Google it and, and get it for free. Uh, okay, so 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 what's the idea? So so here I'm just going to think about things in generality. So think about surfaces in Rn. So suppose I have a, a surface sitting inside of Rn. Uh, so think of I think I want to be a, a submanifold. It's a C1 submanifold. 
So we can make a measure, we can make a, a, a Morel measure out of, uh, uh, sorry, a Rabba measure out of C1 by, in the following way. So, so if you give me some open set in Rn, I can just take uh, the Hausdorff measure of the intersection of this open set with these circuits. Okay, so if I have some, you know, some uh, uh, sigma k sitting inside of Rn, and you give me some 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 open set, and I just I just I just take the measure there, and I produce a a uh, a uh, I produce a uh, a a a, a, a a measure, uh, and so maybe let's just call it. This is the measure associated to the to the surface. Okay, so you can also write it as just the integral uh, over the set of. Okay, uh, turns out if we want to do calculus, a uh, a surface also gives you a a measure on the Grassmannian. Okay, so so sigma k. Also, uh, gives a measure on, on not just Rn. So this is a measure on open sets in Rn, but in but in uh, Rn uh, cross the Grassmannian. So this is the set of k planes, unoriented k planes inside of Rn. So how do we define the measure? Let's just write out the definition. So now I have to tell you what what the measure is. So I'll, I'll, den I'll denote it. So if I have a semantical, th this measure that's now on, on the Grassmannian, uh, I will define as follows. So if you give me some set in, now the open set is living inside here. Uh, sorry, this should be a uh, big um, What you do is you just take the, uh, the, Haus the Hausdorff uh, K measure of all the X's in the, uh, surface with the property that x and the tangent space of x to the surface is in my open set. Okay, so so that's the sort of this, so that's what it is, right? So you only care you have some open set inside of R A across uh, across the Grassmannian, and you only care about uh, the part that that uh, is tangent to the surface that you're starting with. Um, okay, so uh, a varifold, so a varifold is just a generalization of this procedure. Okay, so 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 we denote um, a varifold is a is just a positive right on this uh, defined on R n. This is a k variable. K is like the dimension of the of the of the variable. Okay, so it's a huge generalization of this. And uh, so um, an integral variable. So this is a theorem with a lot of definitions. So I will write a few definitions, and then we'll go in detail through through uh, examples and, and how this how this works. So an integral variable. So an integral k variable. What is that? It's um uh so it is a well it, it's it's a varifold uh the form well it's gonna it's a countable sum. So it's a countable sum uh from i goes from one up to potentially infinity uh of here I have these mi, here I have these these uh, measures that are associated to some manifolds, which are defined above. So it's a form of, like this where, um, where I should say, where, where, where these sigma i are uh, C1 uh, some manifolds. And these mi are positive integers. So it's, a, it's like a countable union of surfaces, a bunch of surfaces, right? Where you, where you count some of them twice or three times, et cetera. Okay, any, any questions? 
one more definition, and, and then we'll then we'll look at a bunch of examples. So here, here notice that here the mi are just integers, are just integers, right? But you can imagine that you have some function m which is changing on the surface. Okay, and these are what's called rectifiable variables. So, so a rectifiable variable. Okay, is one where is the following. So, um, um, so it's a, it's a, it's again a countable sum. Of, uh, of uh, so, so I'll define what these are. So it's a countable sum. I goes from one to infinity. But now I want to again these are going to be semantics. But now I'm going to have some multiplicities are going to be changing on the surface. So something like this, where again uh, sigma i are c one semantics, uh, and uh, m i are just functions from the sigma i into positive numbers or non negative numbers. Sorry. Uh, and, and I define each of these measures as the following way. They give me some open set. Um, like before, I just integrate over uh, all x in um, uh, the surface uh, such that x and the tangent space to the surface of x are contained in the open set. So now, again, these open sets are lying in, in Rn cross, cross this corresponding. And, and here I just put the, the function mix, and we do the usual algorithm. Yeah. 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 In the what? In that definition of integral a value. Uh, yeah, so, so right. So, I guess they should be distinct, so you don't want to have one with infinite multiplicity. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they should, I guess, yeah, so they should be, right, so maybe, yeah, so, so, yeah, so, 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 so right, so they are sort of distinct so, surfaces in this, in this, in this setting. Yeah, and if they come with multiplicity, that's counted here. Okay. Yeah. Sorry? So we are still going to call it the multiplicity function for a rectifiable variable, even though it, it uh, it's the same multiplicity. So so this definition reduces to that definition when it's an when it's a an integer. Question. Uh, okay. So the nice thing about these measures is that with measures you can take limits, right? So that's. And you can study limits of, of surfaces. So, um, right, so, this, so the topology is just going to be the um, weak star topology. Right, so, so what is that? So, so if I have a sequence of, A is a sequence of, uh, of, uh, of, of varifolds, not necessarily one of these uh, better varifolds. Uh, yeah. Uh, Sorry. Uh, Here they don't have to be positive integers. They're just they're just functions on the surface. Okay. So just imagine a surface with a multiplicity function, which is changing as you go around the surface, versus an integral varifold where they are constants. These are just so manifold with say multiplicity seven, and here it's a so manifold where the multiplicity is changing. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Oh yes, I can't go there. Yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> right. So, so, so we have a. Uh, uh, so, so we say. So this is the weak star topology. So if I have a sequence of varifolds VK uh, or varifolds, okay, we say uh, VK um, converges weakly to another varifold if 
Okay, so now for all, uh, so for all functions, uh, continuous functions from Rn cross um, cross, uh, cross the Grassmannian into R, uh, we have that the if I integrate uh, with respect to the the, uh, the uh, right that these converge. So this is the weak star topology. Um, and one more, finally, sorry, one more definition and then we'll look at a bunch of examples is just the idea of the mass of a variable, right? So if I have uh, U is some subset of Rn and V is a, uh, a K variable, I could say I could define what the mass of the barrelfold is in some in the set U, just by uh, by taking um, so the, the barrelfold is a measure. So I'm just plugging in U across the complete barrelfold uh, money. Okay. So you have barrelfolds, which is a huge class, very badly behaved. Then you have a, a subset of rectifiable manifolds. That's where you have this multiplicity function on a union of some manifolds. And then you have the good class, or the least better class, the ones that are actually integral variables, just a union of, of some manifolds. Okay, but uh, but uh, but they are. So, so let's give some examples. Uh, so the first example is just take a sequence of circles. Um, and uh, so, so just imagine like flattening them. So take a sequence of circles, flattening them more, and flattening more until you get a line with multiplicity two. So if this is my sequence, uh, sigma n, and I'm looking at the variables associated to this family. So what does what will this converge to? It's a weak convergence. So any ideas? Well, what are we what are we getting here? We, let's call this the interval. Okay. Yeah, so we're just getting two times the, the varifold associated to the interval, like that. And so you see, varifold convergence is pretty bad, right? Because here we had a nice smooth surface, no boundary. We take we do varifold limit, we get something, but it has it has boundary, right? And that's not being factored into this limit at all. Okay, uh, so that's a problem. <clears throat> So yeah, you want to think of this min-max sequence that we have. You know how we could how we could uh, get some kind of compactness, um, right? Um, so here's another example. Well, um, well, so so here's another example. And let's take again the interval. Okay, and let's divide it up into uh, pieces that are uh, of size uh, one over n. Okay, and now look at a kind of sawtooth type function that goes like this. Uh, so this is, uh, so, so let's call it this the, so this height, let's say is one over N. Okay, and let's, let's, let's just first look at the, the, the measures, just the surface measures. These are not variables that are associated to this guy. So, so what do they converge to? <clears throat> so you wanna see, well, what is, what is this length? Actually converging to the sum of the length. Well, you can do you can use the Pythagorean theorem, and you will get that you actually converge uh, to root five times the um, uh, times the times the measure on the interval. Okay, so, th so these are not variables because I don't have a star. This is just the just the measure associated to the to the uh, semantic. So you see, I started out with integral variables. These are integral variables. They're just a union of of, uh, of arcs, right? With, with some integer multiplicity. The integer multiplicity is one there. And uh, so the integral variables are not compact in the sense. And it's even worse if we try to look at what the variables are converging to. So any idea, what are the variables weakly converging to associated to this sequence? Yeah. 
they are not even of this type at all because you see the the, uh, the tangent vectors are all in in this direction, right? Half of them are in this direction, and the other half are in the other direction. So in the end, you don't get anything of the form. You don't even get a rectifiable variable, right? So, so here, here's a limit. Is not oh, well, these are not really variables, but this is not even a rectifiable variable. Because in the limit, it's not supported on it's not supported on the tangent plane, right? It, it, if you just if you, if you take those limits, you're going to you get some, half of it supported on these and half supported on the other ones. So this is a good example to have in mind. Uh, Leon Simon's book is a great book, but it has no examples <laughs> or pictures, which is funny given the topic. Um, right. Um, maybe I'll do one more example, which will be useful later. So what about surfaces? So we're looking at uh, two-dimensional surfaces. Um, uh, um, so, so let me just say this. So, they, so integral variables, maybe the conclusion of uh, integral variables, just have bad compactness properties, meaning that they don't have compactness. Uh, so, so what about what about following? Uh, suppose I take uh, a sequence of uh, of spheres, so 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 sigma n are going to be a sequence uh, of spheres uh, in R three, kind of like the situation that we're dealing with in that uh, Simon Smith situation, and uh, and and the way I want to think about them is the following. So 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 take so take a like a box, right? So think of a sphere as being like a serial box. Where this dimension is like one over n, right? So a very thin serial box, right? And now treat it like a piece of paper, right? In the way when you when you fold to make a torus. So if you take a piece of paper, right? You fold, and you fold around, and you can get a torus. So if you do that, so if you fold, so if you if you identify, so you fold the paper this way and then this way, you get a sequence. Uh, so you, you can obtain a sequence sigma n of uh, two spheres, uh, such that the variable associated to these spheres actually is converging to. Well, what are you going to see in the limit if you do that? Well, what what variable? You, well, you'll see twice the variable that's associated to t, where c is t is some torus. Is that picture clear? Because when I explained it once before, it was not clear. So, so take a, think of this paper as a piece, as a two sphere, right? We, we, okay, maybe that's not a good. Um, okay, okay. Here, think of this, think of this as a two sphere, right? The, the, the boundary of this chalk box, but make it very skinny, right? So imagine I squeeze it to be really skinny. So it's still a two sphere, and then fold it to make it a torus in the way you normally do, right? And so that's. So then as varifolds, right, then the measures in, in this weak sense are converging to a torus. Okay, so, so genus can grow when you uh, so genus can grow. Genus can grow uh, with varifold convergence. It can also drop, right? You could take just take a handle and make it smaller and smaller until it drops. But the point is uh, having a sequence of spheres. Converging as variables does not imply that the limit is also a sphere in any sense. Okay, any any, any questions about that picture? Okay. So the reason why we care about them uh, is that uh, is that we can take. Um, is that there's a notion of a first variation for these guys. Hmm. Okay, so the so um so the so So 
So let's start with the case of the hypersurface, which we understand hopefully somewhat well. So let's take, we take a, a surface, this is just a, a surface, uh, a submanifold. Uh, and uh, let's take an ambient vector field. So let's just say X is a smooth C infinity one, uh, compactly supported. Uh, vector fields. Right, and as we teach in differential geometry, you know, this uh, generates a flow. So we get a flow. So, so the, the vector field, if we gives a flow, uh, um, of the flow of X, and the uh, diffeomorphism starting at the identity. Okay, and when we take the uh, uh, derivative with respect to T of in this sub manifold. Uh, <clears throat> we have this first variation formula. So the divergence uh, of the vector field of X uh, along the amount. So this is a form of the first variation formula. Where this guy here is just the divergence. So at some point P, it's just you sum i goes from one to k ei x i okay where ei span one to ei uh, span uh, the tangent space uh, uh, of of, uh, of the surface sigma at the point b okay so this is the first iteration form the one form of it and uh, the key thing to notice that this divergence doesn't really depend on the surface at all. See, it only depends. So this is just some, you know, this is happening in Rn, right? Rn plus one, no, I'm sorry, Rn. So this is just a, a um, this has nothing to do with the surface. It only depends on this plane, right? We're not differentiating the surface at all. So, so the, the, the insight is that, um, right, is that it, uh, uh, diver this divergence term only depends Engine plane at a point, right, and not on the surface in a more complicated way, not on the surface otherwise. And so, in particular, it makes sense for a general variable. So, <clears throat> so let's define what the first variation is for a general variable. <clears throat> So let's say V is a K variable. Um, so it's just going to be, and so, so chi is, let's just say, a ambient vector, ambient, uh, smooth uh, vector field. Okay, then, so the notation we, the standard here is you take, uh, you use delta, the, the variation of the variable V in the direction of chi, where chi is this vector field. Okay, it's just defined to be, um, well, the variable is a measure. That's what a variable is, it's a measure. And the function I want to measure is the divergence uh, t uh, x p. Okay, so, so, so this function here, right? Uh, so this is a function on R uh, N uh, cross the best one. Okay, where if you give me a, uh, uh, let me just say, sorry. Um, so if you give me a point and, and some plane uh, T, uh, I just, uh, it just gives the, um, ah, so it's the same, it's the same definition as before. So just differentiate your vector field in these directions where I go from one to K and, uh, and these, and E1 and E K uh, span plane T. Okay. 
Yeah, so maybe I should just write it like, maybe this would be a better way to talk about it. So, so we have a function. Uh, this is a function defined on, uh, on the Grassmannian, a real value function. This is just this is just algebra and calculus in our end. It has nothing to do with the uh, with the with the surface that we're interested in. And then we just apply the measure to it. Any questions about that definition? Yeah. Um, the vector p x is not supposed to be uh, in schema. No, no. So this is just a, a vector field defined on the in the map. It's an ambient, ambiently defined vector field with compact support. Yeah, so, so that's a good point. The vector field has nothing to do with the surface. It's just ambiently defined. Here's your surface, here's your vector field. It could be disjoint from the support, right? And then, you know, the, the, you know generally it should really be zero, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, an orthonormal basis. Thank you, thank you. This is an orthonormal basis. And I should emphasize this is all happening in our end. So this is just algebra and involves some you know first derivatives of the vector field in our end, but um, but no derivatives of the surface. Oh, any other questions? So so because we're using ambient vector fields, we're getting around dealing with yeah question. Tilda is just emphasizing it, just me being emphatic. <laughs> this is getting too excited. Yeah. <laughs> yeah sorry. About that. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> okay. So now we have the last definition, hopefully of the entire eight lectures. But we'll see. Uh, so, so we say B is uh, stationary. So B is a variable in. Uh, in an open set U, right? If if this variation uh, is equal to zero uh, for all uh, chi, uh, which are smooth vector fields, supported in, in U, supported compactly in U. If you take a minimal surface intersected with some ball, then that surface will be a stationary variable in that ball. So those are the, the, my favorite ones, of course. But uh, we have to deal, because remember, we're looking at a min-max sequence, sequence of surfaces. We don't know what's going on, right? Um, so, so for a surface, <clears throat> You know, for a surface, this coincides with what you know to be true, right? So if I have, if I use my previous notation of a, a barrelfold associated to a surface, here I take its variation in some direction i. What I get is just as we've uh, seen several times in other lectures, we get the mean curvature vector dotted with the, the normal parts, right? Plus uh, a boundary term here, uh, and, and nu is a co-normal. So let me give, so, 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 so it reduces to what we expect. Let's just give one example of something which is stationary and not, and not, uh, and not uh, smooth. So let's just take uh, an open set to be a, a nice ball. That's my open set. And let's take three segments that meet exactly at one point like this in the center. Okay, where the angle between uh, all of these is 120. So the claim is that this is a stationary variable. So this is an integral, this is an integral, so the claim is this is a stationary variable. Um, uh, so the claim is, let's give this a name, uh, S. So S, which is, um, uh, so, so, uh, so, so S is, um, so it's the sum of these three components, right? S1, uh, S2, and S3, which are being added up. So to keep my old notation, so it's equal to uh, sum of 
these three uh, submanifolds. Okay, the claim is that this variable is stationary. Okay, so how could how could we show that it's stationary? What would we? How do we deal with that? Well, this is all linear. So if uh, you give me some vector field, it's going to be the sum of these uh, applied to each of these guys here. Plus u s three, and what and what are, what, are, what what will these evaluate to? You give me some vector field, so we have some ambiently defined vector field in this open set. Uh, this is my who knows what it's doing. This is my vector field. Uh, how can I figure out what this what this is? Sorry. Because what? If that's a straight line. These are straight lines, right? So, so this term is going to be zero for each of the s, for s1, 2, and 3. If I let a sigma be s1, 2, or 3, this term is going to vanish. So, but, but what about this term? What will this term give me? Yeah, so, well, so we have, so, oh, I'm out of colors. Yeah, okay. So, so, uh, so what are these three co-normals, right? So we have, you know, S1, its co-normal goes like this. Uh, this is new of for S1, uh, et cetera. So, so what we're gonna get is the first term is gonna vanish and we're just gonna get, uh, this is just an actual sum. So we're gonna get X, uh, whatever X, whatever chi is at the, at the origin point, right? Taking the inner product with the sum of, of uh, the co-normal Associated to S one plus the co-normal associated to S two plus the co-normal associated to S three. Okay, so for this to be stationary, we need to show that this is equal to zero, right? For all, so for all, uh, so why is it going to be zero for all chi? Say, how do we show it's zero for all chi? Sorry? Sorry? What? Right, so the, yeah, so the sum here is, is equal to zero, exactly, so we get zero for, for the, uh, sorry. Um, okay. Okay, great. So, okay. So that's all I want to say now about stationary variables. I just want to make one final comment about compactness, because that's what we're going to be uh, using uh, uh, for compactness. So, so there's uh, sort of two compactness theorems. So, um, so, so, um, so, uh, so we have uh, so Allard proved the following important theorem. Um, suppose I have uh, a sequence of uh, stationary interval interval variables. Okay, and suppose that their mass, uh, the masses are all uniformly bounded. Okay, and suppose uh, sigma i Converge weakly to sigma infinity. And then what he proved is that uh, sigma infinity is also an integral manifold. So this is a hard theorem. Uh, and uh, this is what this is. Something very important because it means we can take the limit of, of, of stationary integral variables. Um, so, like we had that sawtooth earlier, that sawtooth, you know, the, the the curve going across, up and down, you know, that had a bound on the mass, but they were not stationary. Uh, and uh, and uh, this 
theorem doesn't apply. Yes. Do you think we finish here? Yeah. We have the film and we're kind of be late. Oh. In, uh, so oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I was just going to say that, that uh, it's related to what I was look, talking about yesterday, which was if you have a sequence of, of, uh, of minimal surfaces with bounded area, uh, then you could always take a limit, which is an integral power. So if you take a, a sequence of low downs of the shark surface, you get a union of two planes. Which is a stationary variable. So, so that's the that's the kind of convergence I was talking about last time. Okay, but sure, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, sorry, so, I mean, what you said yesterday, you had a bomb the second thing. Like a sequence of kind, right? Yeah. Uh, a sequence of stationary, so they have a limit, which is a multiple but I mean, here, so basically the limit is an integral variable, so it's basically a hypersurface. Okay, it's, it's basically some manifold. But I mean, don't you need, I mean, I'm, I'm confused about uh, about the result that says have a bound on the second fundamental form and a bound.